Let's get to Worst Take. And shout out to you for finding these joints, man. Worst Take has been a great segment here on KFTV where we react to the sound bites of the latest news related to the New York Knicks. And we got to start with our guy, Evan the Snake Roberts of WFAN. You know, he always talks about how much he watches Knicks fan TV when we lose. Well, this was a clip that came out from his podcast on WFAN after the Knicks and the Nets made the trade for Macau Bridges. Let's hear from my guy, Evan Roberts, and uh, kick him while he's down. Here we go. You can't trade Mikel Bridges, the only thing worth a damn on this roster, to the damn Knicks. You can't do it. Their picks are going to be freaking worthless because they're good. Congratulations. You're good. We suck. And now our rebuild is reliant on the Knicks sucking, which they're not going to do. So, look, I'm not anti-trading Mikel Bridges. I think the Nets needed to pick a lane with this franchise and pick a lane with this roster. But to send them to the Knicks for these garbage – I'm sorry, they're garbage picks. And I'm not insulting you. You're good. That's why your picks suck. And to get back once in it, always in it, Boyan Bogdanovich, we can't even get a good young good – we can't get Deuce in this deal. We can't even get that. We just get your treasure trove of crap draft picks. And now I have to live in a world. You think the Nets were irrelevant 10 minutes ago. I got to live in a world in which that phony, and he is a damn phony, Mikel Bridges. He is the opposite of a leader. You saw it. You could tell. I called this out a few months ago. He's a follower. He's a Nick because he got bullied by Josh Hart. That's why he's a Nick. I got bullied. <laughs> oh, it made me feel bad about myself. If you have balls and you're a leader and you think you're as good as you are, you lead this team to something other than the garbage 37-35 wins they had last year. Less than that. I think it was less than that. I, I mean, what do you expect a guy to do? He's playing with a band of bums. You expect Mikal Bridges to go out there, put it, put his durability on the line, put his prime on the line for the garbage New Jersey Nets? Come on, man. He wanted to be a Nick from draft day. They finally made it happen six years later. All his brothers are over here. He did the right thing, man. And the Nets did right by him, J.D., man. Come on, bro. I mean, Evan, the first thing I want to ask you was, were you really driving? Right. <laughs> because I don't <laughs> I mean, if you were, were you in the Hamptons? I didn't see no buildings. I didn't see yeah. no lights changing. I didn't see nothing. Like, no clouds. Nothing. Like, and the, the, But the wheel was moving. Right. The wheel was moving. Was he at Dave and Buster's or something? Or, or was he legitimately in his car? Like, where was he going, bro? Like, he was so mad. He's, uh, I'm, I'm just in his own world. He thinks he's driving. Uh, going so in, going that, nowhere like the Nets. You're going to need to clarify that, Evan. <laughs> uh, how about this? I actually think that might not be a bad take. <laughs> no, no, not a bad one. Because, because it, you know, in actuality, he's talking about the, you know, he's frustrated about the the value of the picks, which he believes won't be any good because obviously he's contingent on the Knicks uh, record during those seasons. So he fully expects the Knicks because of the core that they have in their late 20s to be good for, for you know, a long time, at least four to five years. And, and then even he even mentioned Deuce. How about Evan trying to, you know, get yeah. one of our young players? You know, can you bring somebody? So him, you know, recognizing Deuce as a uh, nice, nice player was good. And listen, he he criticized Mikel, but is Mikel even going to get booed when we're at the Barclays? Right. <laughs> it, it'll be all Knicks fans in there, so he'll get a standing <laughs> ovation. Saying, like, He's is, good. Is Mikel even going to feel the hate? <laughs> He's good. This, like, this ain't LeBron going back to Cleveland or Kyrie going to Boston. He's good. So if I had to, you know, rank it, I would say from a Knicks standpoint, uh, it's a good take from a Nets. Yeah. Listen, man, uh, that's that's it's it's not gonna be good for. And, and I mean, how does Sean Mark still have a job, CP? <laughs> like, how many coaches is he gonna hire? How many, like, you know, directions that they're gonna go in? And he's still the guy that apparently, you know, they feel has a plan because it yeah. doesn't look like he has a plan because it's always changing um so i don't know man they made the move to brooklyn and this is a major setback because when it's like the clippers go into a new arena right the clippers are about to start their own legacy um they have a great owner that spends but that that doesn't mean anything it's yeah. a salary cap league you have to go into building yourself with you know some type of winning for a certain period of time you can't like if the clippers start winning in 10 years 
they start winning 10 years. That's not going to do anything. When you make a move like this, you go into Brooklyn, you want to go from the jump so you can capture some buzz, maybe some fans, you know, maybe some, you know, value as a franchise. This is a huge setback for them. Um, but if you're the Knicks, you know, <laughs> I ain't worried about it. Yeah, I ain't worried. But it, it's been oh, setback after setback, right? Remember when they thought they had the super team when they brought Paul Pierce and KG over here with Jason Kidd? Oh, my God. Flopped. They brought in KD and Kyrie. I thought this was going to be the changing of the guard. Kept James Harden. Flopped. Mikal Bridges. Flopped. Hey, man, if you're a Nets fan, cash in those season tickets to come to the Garden, baby. This is a one-team town. Shout-out to Evan Roberts. He's on right now with Tiki right now, probably crying somewhere. Shout-out to Lansky TV. Um, but, yeah, that, that's their problem, man. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about what we got going on. All right, here's the other one that we need to react to. And this is – I didn't even hear this one. This is fresh. But this is from the Maggie and Perloff show, also on the app, Odyssey app uh, and, uh, and CBS Radio. And this was Andrew Perloff. Saying that basically he's not uh, he's not too impressed with this Knicks deal. So let's see what let's see hear what he had to say and let's react to it. Here we go. I'm Listen to his logic. As a Sixer fan, I'm not scared of the Knicks at all. They're adding a duplicative piece. They already have. They probably have OG if he oh, comes back. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Fourteen. Let me let me. Uh, the people can't see it. So let me start that one from the top. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm not scared of this move as a Sixer fan. I'm not scared of the Knicks at all. They're adding a duplicative piece. They already have, they probably have OG if he comes back. OG and they have, OB, yeah. they have like 14 perimeter players. What, what's, the, what's the difference that Mikael Bridges is making? What, so it's going to be Jalen Brunson on the outside or Dante DiVincenzo on the back, uh, outside or now it's Mikael Bridges on the outside? Don't they already have him? They are built for the Celtics, right? Just like the Timberwolves were built to beat the Nuggets, and then they had absolutely no matchup for a more perimeter-oriented Dallas. You can't build for one team in the NBA because you have no idea what's going to happen moving forward. I'm not scared of this move as a Sixer fan. I'm not scared of the Knicks at all. They're adding a duplicative piece. They already have. They probably all have. All right, so that, that was a repeat of that, and he couldn't be more wrong, and it's no what wonder that he's a Sixer dude. fan. He, he couldn't be more wrong. Thing. He's like, they've got, they've got all these guys around the perimeter. Well, have you seen what the Celtics look like? You know, have you seen what the world champs were doing out there where they had all perimeter guys? I mean, you need versatility. And this is not a duplicative piece. You can put Mikal at the two. You could put OG at the three, at the four. You can go small ball with Julius because now you still have defenders, you have shooters, and you still maintain your rebounding edge, especially if you're going to keep Mitch and Julius and Josh Hart. They are going to still be ferocious on the boards. Now you're adding firepower, more defensive versatility, and different ways that you can kill a team, and you still got the head of the snake in Jalen Brunson, one of the most clutch players in the NBA, bro. They are well built to win a championship, man. I don't know what this a guy's talking A duplicative piece. Yeah, they need duplicative wings. What are you talking about? Right. Yes. Right. They need more. They need, yes. they need more than one wing. So, yes, it is. You're right. <laughs> That's what they actually need. First of all, um, maybe I missed the memo, but the way he was talking, it looked like the Sixers are going to be the defending champ. <laughs> right. He goes, he goes from, you know, they have a duplicative piece and this and that. Oh, the Knicks are built to beat the Celtics. That's what we want to do. That yeah. They're the champs. Yes. Yes. If you're saying we're, we're built now to, to challenge the Celtics, that means we are executing the game plan. They're the champions and they're the number one team in the East. What are you talking about? The Sixers are the ones that may get a 35 year old, wing and he may not be enough how about the sixers may be duplicative wings yourselves what are you talking about they don't have anyone right now and in 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 fact the knicks getting Mikel bridges actually now puts pressure on the milwaukee bucks of the world on yeah. the philadelphia 76ers of the world because sometimes it's kind of when the yankees and the red sox era when when the yankees made a move the red sox had to respond when the red sox had a, made a move the yankees had to respond when the knicks with the knicks making this move if they do in fact re-sign og and obi you don't think the sixers and darren Morey are going to be like well this team just beat us um right. they were a little banged up yes we were too but can we go into a series next year against the Knicks with Tobias Harris at the three? No, you cannot. If you're the Milwaukee Bucks, who how how they're going to improve their defense? Yeah, that, that's been their biggest weakness. So you make moves, and sometimes you're able to actually dictate what the other front office does. And by doing that, you put pressure on them to potentially make a move, have a knee jerk reaction move, make a you know a move that 
maybe they wouldn't do on a normal season, but because they have pressure during this offseason, now they're looking at all these 35-year-olds and just trying to pick, well, is it going to be Jimmy? Is it going to be Paul George? Is it going to be, you know, Kevin Durant? Like, th they have pressure, and I think that helps the Knicks because any of those experiments fail, like you mentioned, uh, CP, they get Paul George and then Bede's hurt. <laughs> you think Paul George wants to be in a situation where he's the number one option? Exactly. No. So exactly. the Knicks making this move actually adds competition, but it helps them from a front office standpoint over the uh, other contenders in the East. <laughs>